Our intern, Isaiah Robertson, who's moving on after today. Tune into Channel 8 News, covering Merrick County. Now, from Nebraska's trusted news source, this is Channel 8 News at 5. More tension this morning surrounding gubernatorial candidate Charles Herbster. Why he says he won't attend his scheduled deposition today in the sexual battery counter lawsuit filed by State Senator Julie Slama. Plus, with the abortion debates heating up in Washington, one local group is celebrating Nebraska lawmakers' failure to pass more restrictive measures. Why they're worried this celebration may be short-lived. And as you get behind the wheel this Mother's Day weekend, police are asking you to be extra cautious on the roads. Why speeding is a big problem and what you can do to make sure you make it home safely to mom. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for starting your Friday with us. I'm Katrina Spurl. Give yourself a pat on the back, Katrina. We made it. I'm yes. Andrew Ward. More of those top stories here in just a moment. But first, let's take a live look at our Apple camera outside. It's just after 5 a.m. and it is 54 degrees, a balmy start to your Friday. A little misty there, if I can see that right. Meteorologist Brittany Foster is up next here with our first forecast. Brittany. That's right. A lot of mist out there, quite a bit of fog this morning. We are starting off looking gloomy. And it's all thanks to that fog just dropping our visibility. Let's take a look. We're not dealing with showers, just a little bit of mist produced by some of that fog, mainly seeing some thicker fog out to our west, kind of similar to yesterday, but a little bit lower visibility below a mile in Grand Island, below even half a mile in Kearney, one and a half mile visibility in Hebron, five in Lincoln at the moment, and four in Columbus. But keep in mind, as we progress throughout the next two hours to three hours, we could see this fog thickening up and visibility is dropping further. So please turn your lights on. Use some caution while driving. It is mild though this morning. You don't need to have the heater cranked on in your car. 54 degrees in Lincoln, feeling just like that. 51 in Grand Island, 52 if you live in Hebron, 53 in Fall City, and 54 in Omaha. So fairly nice start to the day, and it gets even better. We will warm up today, 10 o'clock, 56 degrees. Clouds will hang around for a majority of your Friday, but by the second half of the day, we're going to start to see sunshine trying to peek through the clouds, and it's going to be just enough with also southerly winds to return temperatures back to the upper 60s, around 67 degrees. Now, we keep warming into the weekend. We'll take a quick look at the forecast. You can see 78 Saturday, also the 70s on Sunday, maybe a little bit of some rain, but beautiful forecast on the way. Great for spending some time outside. It just gets even warmer next week. I'll explain a little more in a few minutes. All right, can't wait for that. Thank you, Brittany. Just days before the upcoming primary, there's more tension surrounding gubernatorial candidate Charles Herbster. Yeah, he says he won't attend his scheduled deposition today in the sexual battery counter lawsuit filed by State Senator Julie Slama. Now, this is, comes after Herbster filed the initial defamation lawsuit against Slama late last month. According to court documents, Herbster's attorney asked for the sworn deposition to be postponed, saying the two legal teams did not agree on this time. However, Slama's lawyers say Herbster knew about this meeting for the past 11 days, but didn't respond until now. The judge set a new hearing for the case on June 3rd, well after Tuesday's primary election. Eight women, including Slama, have accused Herbster of groping them without their consent. When a last minute effort to further influence Nebraska's primary election, Charles Herbster and former President Donald Trump held a telephone rally. This comes just days after his Save America rally in Greenwood. Channel 8's Tommy, Tommy Lemon was on the call and shares what many voters are considering this morning. The tele rally took place just weeks after Herbster was accused of sexual misconduct towards eight women, including Republican State Senator Julie Slama. Despite the allegations, Trump has continued to show his support for Herbster. They're putting out false and malicious claims, and you've been seeing that, and I've gone over it all. It's nonsense. Charles is a fine man who I've known so long, and he's innocent of those despicable charges. It's welcome to the world of politics, Charles. Charles will cut taxes, cut regulations, and he'll demand fair and reciprocal trade. He'll fight for Nebraska farmers. Charles will stand up to China. And he'll always put America first. Trump was in Greenwood, Nebraska just last weekend for his Save America rally. The rally was held in support of Herbster, who served as Trump's agricultural advisor during his presidency. Both my wife and I were at Trump Tower on June 16th of 2015 when Donald J. Trump and his lovely wife Melania came down the escalator and announced that he would run for the president of the United States. The tele rally ended with a poll asking listeners who they were planning on voting for on Tuesday's election. The primary election is set for Tuesday, May 5th. 
Right now, a petition is going around that is aimed at getting rid of voter fraud in the state. If passed, the constitutional amendment would require you to show an ID before voting. Signatures from 10% of voters are needed to get in front of lawmakers, and opponents say this could take away the rights of voters. This, and always will be, an attempt to either maintain power and influence, both politically and economically, or stop the shift from the power. Preston also says there's no evidence that voter fraud is a serious issue in the state. But again, Nebraska's primary election will be held on May 10th. One organization supporting the LGBTQ plus community in Lincoln is celebrating several wins from this past legislative session. The group Speak Out Nebraska also spoke about what it wants to focus on for next session at a virtual event yesterday. They say they tracked 20 bills this past, these past several months with many of the ones they opposed failing to advance. They say the proposals they supported will likely be reintroduced next session as well. That includes more controversial topics. It's really important to celebrate the the things that you defeat, um, which this year I think was really impressive. Um, one of the things with uh, defeating 933, which was the trigger bill to ban abortion in Nebraska, is that we can expect a special session. Addressing abortion has been one of the top priorities for all candidates on the ballot as the election season heats up with next Tuesday's primaries. The Nebraska State Patrol is gearing up for a special effort this Mother's Day weekend to make sure everyone makes it home to mom safely. The Slow Down Move Over partnership reminds all drivers to obey the speed limit and to move over for emergency vehicles. Speeding is a major factor in many of the serious and fatal crashes we have seen recently in Nebraska and our neighboring states. In 2020 alone, 787 lives in our region were lost due to speed relating crashes. The Nebraska Department of Environment and Energy has begun weekly sampling of public lakes across Nebraska. They're testing for harmful algal blooms, also known as blue green algae and E. coli bacteria at 52 lakes across the state. The testing takes place annually from May through September. Now in coordination with Nebraska Department of Health and Human Services, the state will issue health alerts when test results indicate high toxicity levels. Well, Lincoln has a very old guest in town for a limited time that you probably want to meet. Yeah, generally Nathan Gray did and he gives us a brief introduction right now. Nathan. The Ford Tri-Motor is just about as tried and true of a design as you could ever hope for. The ones that are left have been flying for the better part of a century. Now the one that's here that we're hosting in Lincoln has been around since 1928. And in that time, it's crisscrossed the country as one leg of a cross-country transport service. It's been a sightseeing plane buzzing through the Grand Canyon, and now it's a piece of the past we can reach out and touch. Now the man who flies this living history says it's a little bit different than most everything out there. It's a great airplane. It flies well, it's just heavy on the controls. We kind of, it's like if you ever drove a heavy truck without power steering or brakes, that's kind of like a tri-motor. It does just what you want, but you got to make it happen. And you can experience that in just about the most hands-on way possible if you join them for a flight. Now, it is, of course, weather dependent, but those flights are scheduled to run 9 to 5 today and tomorrow. If you call ahead, it'll cost you $80. If you walk up, it's $85. And any kids who are 17 and under, it's only going to cost them $55 bucks to fly. All right, sounds good. Nathan Grieve, reporting live for us. Thank you, Nathan. Well, grab your cowboy hats. The Nebraska Cornhusker College Rodeo is in town beginning tonight. It's all at the Lancaster Events Center beginning tonight at 7 o'clock. You can purchase tickets in advance at the center's website or there at location. If you can't watch it in person, you can check it out on the Cowboy Channel Plus app. Family Day activities begin at 1 tomorrow with the finals at 7 o'clock. Lincoln City officials are officially unveiling a first-of-its-kind boutique hotel on Nebraska Innovation Campus today. Key stakeholders will discuss the unique features of the Scarlet Hotel and how it impacts campus and the Lincoln community. The Lincoln Chamber of Commerce will also host a ribbon cutting ceremony to commemorate the opening at 4 p.m. And this is all happening on the front entrance of the hotel. That's 2101 Transformation Drive. All attendees are asked to park in the paved lot north of Transformation Drive. And starting today at UNL, a spring art sale by the Clay and Photo Club. It will run from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. today and tomorrow at Richards Hall on campus. It will feature work from both graduate and undergraduate students. They'll also be collecting canned food items to support the Husker Food Pantry. 
And happening in David City today, a regional career expo starting at 1 this afternoon. The event is targeted toward working age youth through adults and will connect them with full and part time job openings, internships and apprenticeships with companies looking for summer or seasonal help from across the region. The expo will also focus on the importance of increasing rural broadband access to help close that digital divide. Temperatures warm closer to average today with the return of some sunshine, but we quickly climb above average into the weekend and we'll even beyond possibly breaking high temperature records. We'll take a look at the big temperature jump that's all coming up after the break. Stick with us. Missouri millionaire Charles W. Herbster is lying. The truth? Herbster wasn't late on taxes 30 years ago. Herbster was late on Nebraska taxes every single year for two decades. The truth? Herbster is lying about his plan to raise taxes. We have to look at entitlements. We have to look at a consumption-based tax. We have to look at entitlements. We have to look at a consumption-based tax. Charles W. Herbster. He's dirty, dishonest, and he's going to raise your taxes. Everybody's jaw dropped. No one believed he was responsible. I did not kill Deb. I've never forgotten my interview with Anthony. Why have you decided to talk about this? There's still an unsolved murder here. The new 2020 tonight on ABC. It's back. The grilled chicken strawberry salad. Fresh greens. Piled with feta cheese, crisp cucumbers, candied pecans, 100% all natural grilled chicken tenders, and topped with farm fresh strawberries. Dine in, drive through, online, or delivery. Refresh your home's exterior and enjoy it all summer. Save 11% on everything at Menards. There's no limit to what you can create with landscape blocks. Crest Stone retaining wall blocks are 99 cents each after 11% rebate. Change it up with Dutch Boy Max Bond. It's an exterior paint and primer that provides superior adhesion to chalky, dirty, glossy, or previously painted surfaces. A gallon is $36.48 after sale price and 11% rebate now at Menards. Save big money at Menards. Whether it's your home or your business, you know a nice lawn is important. That's where Ray's Lawn and Home Care comes in. We can meet all your residential and commercial needs. And right now, we're offering a 20% discount for new lawn treatment customers. So give us a call and sit back and enjoy your lawn. Ray's Lawn and Home Care, family owned and operated. Proudly serving Lincoln and surrounding communities for over 50 years. When you need an expert on quality and proven exterior work, whether you're doing commercial or residential, Stonebrook Exterior is the area's premier contractor. Call Stonebrook Exterior today. My name is Amber Winter, and I manage the computer stations here at Williams Cleaners. Quick Connect has always been affordable, they fit within our budget, and they've helped us with all our needs. Quick Connect has been a great partner of ours for many years and have been providing us quality equipment for a decade. I first got to know Charles when he was one of my earliest supporters as a fifth generation Nebraska farmer and rancher who really knows his business. I made him the chair of my agriculture advisory committee, Charles W. Herbster. I promise you as the governor, I will make Nebraska great again. Charles W. Herbster, a good man. Get everyone you know and vote for Charles W. Herbster. Good Friday morning, everybody, and welcome back. You're taking a live look now at Oakland Bay Bridge in San Francisco. But back here in Lincoln, it is 54 degrees on the time, 514. Let's check in now with Elena Verdine to see what's trending this morning. Elena, good morning. Good morning, guys. We made it to Friday. <laughs> yes, woohoo. Well, a lot of people get nervous about going to the dentist, but a dental practice in Tennessee has found an adorable solution to this problem. Meet Milo, the therapy dog in East Nashville Pediatric Dentistry. He comes out by request to sit with these little patients while they have their teeth cleaned to distract them from being scared of all the drills and tools. He's a certified therapy furry friend with a big personality. I love the dog and it's so cute I want to hold it. He makes me feel warm. It's all part of a plan to have different options available for nervous patients. Some of the practice's patients now say that they actually look forward to going to the dentist. Is it possible to show enough gratitude for all that nurses do? 
Every May 6th is National Nurses Day, which kicks off Nurses Week, a special time to set aside to thank nurses and other healthcare workers for their tireless hard work, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic. So give all the nurses in your lives a well-deserved shout out this week. In Maine, a movement aimed to help bees survive and thrive is underway during the month of May. No Mow May encourages people to cut back on mowing their lawns or even skip it altogether. Natural growth provides beads with nectar that they need to grow and pollinate flowers. But many of us are used to seeing an unmowed lawn as a sign of neglect. The city of Portland has now taken No Mow May to a whole new level. They have over 30 acres of park space that they only mow once a year. You can help your local ecosystem and save yourself some yard work while you're at it. Senior pranks are a common occurrence at some high schools this time of year and as graduating seniors start the next chapter of their lives. But police say this one may have been a senior prank in Florida that went too far. It was a dead shark hanging up at the high school where the mascot is a shark. There could be some major consequences. Both the St. John's County Sheriff's Office and the Florida Fish and Wildlife are investigating. A South Dakota seven year old's first communion became so memorable it went viral on TikTok, all because she couldn't get enough of the wine. It was her first communion, and when the priest gave seven year old Brynlin a wafer, she nibbled it, but when she was handed the chalice, she tipped it back and chugged and kept chugging until Father Anthony finally had to stop her. Then she folded her hands and exited gracefully. Her mom says Brynlin was a bit nervous about the wine beforehand, and later that day, the seven-year-old even told her mom she didn't like the taste. Well, then they celebrated accordingly with a spaghetti dinner. <laughs> didn't like the taste? She was chugging that. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> What a lie. I'm just trying to picture just like sitting through this service. You know, you're probably, you've probably been there for an hour already. <laughs> The, my favorite is the priest that he doesn't you know, like, he's like, he's uh, like, uh, 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 like you get it? Uh, more uh, for others. She was feeling the spirit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. All right, well, let's go ahead and take a look at the weather forecast for this morning. We are starting off with fog and not like yesterday. There's a little bit on the thicker side off to the west, dropping visibility now below a mile in Grand Island. So thicker fog this morning, two and a half miles, Broken Bow, one and a half, Hebron, two and a half to our north and Norfolk. Closer to home, Lincoln, we just dropped down to two and a half miles for visibility. One mile or below that in Kearney, one and a half again for the Hebron area and about perfect 10 further off to the east you go. But that's as of now. We could see fog developing and thickening within the next few hours for everyone. So take it slow this morning as you're heading out the door. You kind of will be okay with just a light jacket on. Take a look at temperatures. Mild 54 degrees in Lincoln, 52 Hebron, 47 Hastings, 52 in Columbus. And later today, we say goodbye to the 50s and hello to the 60s again. It's been a while stuck on that train of 50s, but today we break it. 63 degrees at 3 o'clock and by 6 o'clock, I think we'll reach the mid to upper 60s for highs with also Maybe some sunshine will start off the day with quite a bit of cloud coverage. That fog, of course, has to lift, but eventually that cloud coverage might pull apart slowly enough that we'll see some sunshine as we end off the work week. And looking at tonight, we'll hold on to partly cloudy skies, dry conditions, near average temperatures, 48 degrees for your overnight low. And as we look at the weekend forecast, which has Mother's Day, it's looking a little bit better. Good news, moms. 77 on Saturday, mostly sunny skies, a little breezy, but Sunday, now we're expecting the showers mainly in the morning, so the second half of your day should be fairly nice. Maybe a little sunshine, 78 degrees, and here's that storm cast with that timeline for those showers. 7 o'clock in the morning, mainly off to the west, very scattered, off and on showers through 11 o'clock. After that, they fall apart and we start to dry out. So beautiful for Mother's Day and very hot on Monday. You will be sweating. It's going to feel like summer. We're talking about the 90s on the way for eastern Nebraska and on top of it, humid conditions. So get ready for a nice taste of summer to start off the work week next week and it hangs around too all week long. We have another 90 degree high day. I don't know if you caught that. That is now on your Wednesday forecast. Isolated chance for rain as well, kind of picking up rain chances the second half of the week. And as we look at going into Friday and the following weekend, we start to see temperatures kind of wobbling down just a little bit, cooling maybe to the 70s as those rain chances might cool us down. But at least a week of temperatures well above average. So if you were tired of the 50s, your warmer weather is on the way. <laughs> Can't wait. Well done, Brittany. All right, still ahead, a local event that made international headlines is coming back to Lincoln later this month. And if your name is Josh, you know what we're talking about. We speak to the reigning viral champion who's not picking himself to repeat 
That's coming up after the break. Stay with us. Brent Lindstrom has the energy, experience, and conservative vision to deliver for Nebraska families. Our path to economic growth is through limited government and small businesses thriving. I'll eliminate the income tax for middle class families and slash property taxes. I'll make strategic investments in infrastructure and broadband to strengthen our communities. And I'll expand educational opportunities and vocational career paths to create jobs for all Nebraskans. The conservative leader with the experience and a plan for our future. Brett Lindstrom for governor. They claim their mom is addicted. Are you addicted to pain medication? No, I'm dependent on it. Dependence isn't the same as addiction. All new Dr. Phil. Weekdays at 4 on KLKN TV. Looking for a truck repair company you can trust? Stevenson Truck Repair is your one-stop repair shop, performing both mechanical and body repairs on all types of vehicles, from motorhomes to fleet vehicles. Stevenson has you covered. Stevenson Truck Repair, just south of 27th and Superior. Proud to be a BBB accredited business. With so much to consider, so many beautiful ways to accent your home, and our team leading the way, feel free to dream big, because that smile matters most to us. Carpets Direct, 48th and Highway 2, Lincoln. Window replacement is a significant investment in your home, and Renewal by Anderson is the smart choice. Longevity and resale are both very important. You know, we are the long-term solution. You're not going to have the issues that you will have later down the road with other windows. It's really investing in your future. Our Fibrex material is designed for energy efficiency, durability, beauty, and minimal maintenance that you can only get at Renewal by Anderson. We have engineered this material to last. We are the long-term solution, and that's the best value out there. For a limited time only, buy four windows and get one free. And to help you fit your budget, Renewal by Anderson offers 12 months, same as cash financing. Call the number on your screen or visit rbabestoffer.com to take advantage of this exclusive offer. We thought we were empty nesters, but God's plan was different. Suzanne called and said, I need to bring home a four-week baby boy to help a teen mom. <laughs> and she did. With God's grace, Isaac became our fourth child. Turns out, we didn't save Isaac's life. He saved ours. If you want a strong pro-life governor, my husband Jim Pillen knows, life is love. This is just really exciting for them to see that the community still is supporting us. You know, I set out to do something. You know, if I failed, at least I tried. Go Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us. You're watching Channel 8's Evening News. We want to connect with you. Breaking news, weather video, snapshots from your life. Share with us in seconds. Just download the KLKN TV app and look for Submit News and Photos in the main menu. Upload or message us your story idea instantly. Welcome back, everyone. Here's a live look at our showroom's roofing camera in Beatrice. 53 degrees there, 54 degrees here in Lincoln, and the time is 523. The Josh fight is returning to Lincoln this month. Yeah, just over a year ago, four-year-old Lincoln native Josh Vincent Jr. won the inaugural event. She lets Joseph Nasser cut up with little Josh and his dad. Little Josh Vincent Jr., who's now five years old, can't help but smile when he thinks back to the Josh fight. It made me happy. A year ago, Josh's from all over the country squared off in a pool noodle fight. After a fierce battle, it was the littlest of Josh's who prevailed, capturing the hearts and minds of people all over the world. The world responded well to, you know, our little Josh being uh, crown king, so that was pretty awesome. In April, Josh Swain, organizer of the original Josh fight, announced that the event will be returning to Lincoln this month. Little Josh says as fun as it was to win the Josh fight last year, he wants someone else to win this year. Who do you want to win? You want me to win? No. It says a lot about his character, you know. He understands that, that you know, other people are going to want to win these things, and he's okay with that. He just wants to go out there and have fun again and kind of show off his, 
pool noodle fighting skills. Don't get it twisted though. The Vincents plan on going to the Josh fight in May, and little Josh is not going down without a fight. His strategy? I'll just say that, can you get out? Then I'm just going to fight by myself. If this is going to be a yearly thing, I expect it to be even bigger every year. We're just happy to be a part of it and uh, to be crowned the first King Josh is, yes. is, the, is amazing. Reporting on Lincoln, Yosef Nasser, Channel 8 News. I uh, love that little guy. <laughs> well, Josh fight will take place Saturday, May 21st at Bolding Lake Park. That's up in the Air Park area. It'll be at 11 a.m. All right, Brittany. Is it fun noodle attack or uh, fight weather this weekend? <laughs> Fun no. noodle uh, fight. Yeah, <laughs> actually. Noodle fight. <laughs> yeah, that wording was fun. But yeah, you know what? Turn the sprinkler on and have a uh, Josh fight in your backyard, I guess. <laughs> It'd be a great weekend for just enjoying the warmth outside. Now this morning, well, maybe not just yet. We are actually dealing with quite a bit of moisture. You can see a lot of fog. This is a camera in Grand Island, 619 for your sunrise time. And visibility in Grand Island has actually uh, been the lowest for most of us this morning. You can see below a mile there, one and a half miles Hebron, two and a half for York as well as Lincoln. Pearl for 10 still in Omaha and four miles in Columbus. And as we look ahead at later today, eventually we'll warm. But for now, we're at the 50s. So make sure you have at least a light jacket on. But take a look at later today. We break out of the 50s finally into the mid to upper 60s. Should feel fantastic today. Mild again tonight. Some clouds kind of hanging around, but the wind switches back out of the south. And that's going to warm us up just in time for Mother's Day. Now we could maybe see some rain Saturday looking like it'll be just fine and dry. But Saturday late in the day, some rain off in northeast Nebraska. And eventually that'll push its way into the area in the form of scattered showers for your Sunday. So eventually we will see rain chances returning to the area just Sunday morning for Mother's Day. So a little bit of an update there, but a big warm up for next week. That's the big topic we're going to talk about in your full forecast in just a few. All right, looking forward to that. Thank you very much, Brittany. Still ahead, a Nebraska community in mourning will say goodbye to a teen today who died in a tragic hunting accident. Plus, COVID deaths could rise for the first time in months. More details when we come back. I went on many tours. I went all over Lincoln. This was the place that I got drawn to because of the people. I thought it was a perfect fit for us, so I can look back in retrospect and say, you know, I think I hit a home run on this one. GMA This Morning, we're celebrating moms with the biggest live GMA breakfast in bed extravaganza ever. This will be a mother of a Mother's Day surprise. Get ready to feel good this morning on ABC's Good Morning America. And I walked right into U.S. Cellular and I said I want to choose any phone in here for free. What'd he say? He's insured. Really nice guy. I had my pick of any phone from any brand, free. Even the newest ones. Wow. Yeah. You got the big screen? Yeah. Big storage? Yeah. Fits in your pocket? Fits in my pocket. You know, it's a big phone and that's what I wanted and I got, I got what I wanted. At U.S. Cellular, we put you first. So choose any phone free. Plus, get unlimited data for just $30 a month. U.S. Cellular. America's locally grown wireless. Fact. Jim Pillen voted for critical race theory. Pillen's vote approved a new department focused on CRT. Pillen gave a radical chancellor millions of your tax dollars to teach students racist, hateful views of our nation. On illegal immigration, court documents say Pillen hired illegals, falsified documents, all to avoid paying taxes. Jim Pillen, wrong on CRT, wrong on immigration, wrong for Nebraska. You stop at you stop. Yes. Hey, you. Yeah, you. I can help you save 10 cents on every gallon of gas. Uh, there's this hot new money saving app called the MyPhillips 66 Mobile Pay. Uh, put away that plastic. See, all you got to do is download the app, create an account, and then immediately start saving time and money. And now take an extra five cents per gallon off when you pay with your Drive Savvy Rewards card, Direct Pay, or Chase Pay. For 39 years, the Lincoln Independent Business Association has been advocating for local policies and practices that allow businesses to thrive. LIBA works to keep taxes low, so you keep more of the money you work so hard for. A tradition of advocacy, networking, and prosperity. That's LIBA. This message is brought to you by these LIBA sponsors. Dean Hoy State Farm, ArtFX, Epp Concrete, Pioneer Printing, John Henry's Plumbing, Heating, and Air, Schwizo Construction, and Executive Travel. Join us at LIBA.org. Find special values now at the Truckload Delivery Event. Hot Buy, twin size starting at $199. Or better yet, get a free box spring on selected Serta mattress sets. New, flippable, two-sided mattress. Firm, $849 plus $899. 
move up to a premium. Serta iComfort queen size memory foam bed, just $8.99. With adjustable bases starting at $4.99. We have the largest Serta mattress gallery in the state. We have what you're looking for. Shop local. Shop today at Lincoln Mattress and Furniture. Now, from Nebraska's trusted news source, this is Channel 8 News at 5. Coming up this morning, a Nebraska community in mourning will pay respect to a teen this afternoon who passed away after a hunting accident with friends. How support for his family has been so overwhelming that their church is having trouble finalizing plans. Plus, even though COVID deaths could rise for the first time in months, health officials are issuing warnings about certain shots and pills. What they say may be more dangerous than getting infected. Plus, drought-fueled wildfires are finding new ways to impact Nebraska farmers. Why so many are desperate to sell their animals at deep discounts despite a favorable market. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for starting your Friday with us. I'm Katrina Spurl. Committed to the end of the week, everyone. I'm Andrew Ward. We've got more on those top stories here in just a moment. But first, we're going to take a live look at Seattle this morning. Back here in Lincoln, it's just after 5.30 and it's 54 degrees. A balmy start to your Friday. Let's head on over to meteorologist Brittany Foster. He's got your first forecast for us. Brittany. Yeah, 54 degrees, which by the way, that was our high temperature yesterday. Now today it's going to be much warmer considering we already are in the low to mid 50s at the moment. We also are dry but dealing with a little bit of mist. Let's take a look at satellite radar. It's not showing much in terms of cloud coverage, but we actually do have some clouds across southeast Nebraska. They're just at the surface. It's fog that's developed pretty thick fog even off to the West Green Island. You're still below one mile for visibility, just below two miles in Hastings, two and a half in York and also two and a half in Lincoln with five to our north in Wahoo. So if your commute takes you westbound or to the southwest, please make sure you are using caution. Definitely have your lights on as you're driving this morning and that fog is producing a little bit of mist and I think this could continue for most of the morning until the sun starts to go up and starts to lift that fog. But temperature wise, we're going to hold on to the 50s all morning long. It's not until the second half of the day when we'll start to warm out of these 50s that we currently are stuck with, or if you're in Kearney, 40s. And we're talking more like highs in the upper 60s for today. So not in the 50s. We even could see a little bit of sunshine the second half of the day. And if you want warmer temperatures, well, the 70s, 80s, and even the 90s are all in the forecast as we head into the weekend and beyond a big warm up on the way for Nebraska. I'll break it down. That's coming up in a few minutes. All right, sounds good. Thank you very much, Brady. Well, today, friends, family in a Nebraska community in mourning will say goodbye to a teen who died in this week's tragic hunting accident. The visitation for Caleb laid off begins at one o'clock this afternoon at Sutton Memorial Chapel. The 17 year old from Sutton passed away at a Lincoln hospital this Tuesday, according to the Hamilton County Sheriff's Office. Investigators say the accident happened on Sunday while Ladoff was out hunting with friends. Funeral services begin at 11 a.m. tomorrow at Stockholm County Community Church before Ladoff is laid to rest at the Sutton Cemetery. The church also says a meal train is in the works to help his family following an outpouring of love and support. And looking ahead to next week, the fight over abortions will once again take over our nation's capital. Right now, senators are preparing to vote on a bill this coming Wednesday that would legalize the procedure nationwide. This is, of course, comes after this week's stunning Supreme Court leak suggesting justices will overturn Roe v. Wade. The Senate bill named the Women's Health Protection Act of 2022 would supersede legislation already passed by several states that severely restricts or bans abortions entirely. But as of right now, senators do not have the 60 votes needed to overcome a filibuster. Just last February, an earlier version of the bill failed to pass 46 to 48 with six senators not voting. And new this morning, U.S. Senator for Nebraska Ben Sass calling on President Biden to condemn progressive activists who published the home addresses of Supreme Court justices. Senator Sass says the White House has dismissed his blatant harassment as nothing more than, quote, a lot of passion. The senator says that doesn't cut it and we can't pretend this is an isolated incident. He claims state Sen Senator Majority Leader Chuck Schumer spat threats at conservative justices just two years ago from the Supreme Court steps. Sass adds this isn't how adults act and the White House knows this is dangerous. But the senator questions if President Biden has the guts to tell it like it is. More new data making headlines this morning shows nearly half of LGBTQ youth have seriously considered attempting suicide in the past year. This alarming information comes from the Trevor Project. Its survey found suicidal thoughts among the community have been increasing for three years now. 
Trevor Project CEO says the impact of this pandemic and relentless political attacks cannot be understated. Several new laws targeted LGBTQ youth have been put into place nationwide during the three year stretch as well. And that includes Florida's Don't Say Gay Bill, which even led to a massive battle with Disney. And this morning, growing COVID-19 concerns, new data shows hospitalizations and deaths are on track to show a significant increase for the first time in months. And the FDA now encouraging Americans to get either the Moderna or Pfizer vaccines over the Johnson & Johnson shot. Scientists are also responding to reports of patients seeing their symptoms relapse after taking a COVID antiviral drug. The FDA now recommends limiting the use of the one shot Johnson & Johnson vaccine, citing a real though rare risk of blood clots normally seen within days or weeks of the shot. The FDA now saying the J&J shot should only go to patients without access to the Moderna or Pfizer vaccines. Doctors urging Americans to get vaccines and boosters. People are well protected from the vaccines, but those that are unvaccinated make up a large portion of those that are in hospitals. Scientists are looking into some reports of symptoms relapsing after taking Plaxivid, which is shown to cut hospitalization risk by 89%. The antiviral recommended for patients with mild to moderate symptoms and at high risk. To Ukraine now, where U.S. officials have acknowledged shared intelligence helped Ukrainians sink a Russian warship last month. But the Pentagon says it did not provide specific targeting information and had no prior knowledge of Ukraine's intent to attack the ship. It comes as more civilians trapped inside the steel plant in Mariupol are supposed to be evacuated. This morning, a new evacuation attempt is underway in Ukraine as hundreds of people hope to escape the steel plant in Mariupol. This could be setting the stage for Russian President Putin to announce the capture of the key Ukrainian city. Meanwhile, ABC News confirming overnight that U.S. intelligence helped Ukrainian forces sink the flagship of Russia's Black Sea Fleet last month. Well, back here in Nebraska, even with the recent rainfall, farmers, especially cattlemen, are still dealing with this devastating drought, which has made it harder to feed their herds. Chile's Ariana Martinez tells us what options they have and why this drought is different for others. All droughts are different, and what you did in the last drought might not make sense for this drought. Many cattle ranching states are in drought conditions. Nationwide, we are seeing liquidation of the cow herd. Uh, because of those drought situations. With the drought and fires, finding feed has become more difficult. Liquidation happens when you just don't have the feed for them. Um, as cattle people, our number one priority is taking care of those cattle, making sure their nutrition is good. Uh, our number two priority is taking care of the land. And so it can't suffer a lot of uh, overgrazing during a drought and then bounce back and be resilient like we need it to be. Ranchers have two other options if they don't want to liquidate their herd. But with diesel and grain prices higher than in years past, they would be very costly options. The options are to pull, pull the calves early, wean them early and, and put them on a concentrated diet in a feedlot type situation, or maybe pull the cows and put them in that situation, um, move them to another state. Normally having to liquidate your herd means you're taking a big loss, but experts say that shouldn't be the case right now. Fortunately, right now, those prices are holding fairly um, strongly, not, not as well as you'd like. I mean, you're still going to take a loss on a breeding animal, but uh, they are stronger than typical. Typically, the U.S. imports lean beef from overseas, but now we will be stocked up on U.S. ground beef. That's one reason that's staying pretty uh, steady that price on those cow cows because again transportation costs to bring lean beef from other countries that we usually use to make the really lean hamburger that everybody wants in the country um, is is cost prohibitive right now so that's one of those reasons those prices are hanging in there using so many of our cows for ground beef may cause some issues in the future be prepared that in a couple of years because there'll be fewer fed cattle because there's fewer cattle that um, that prime steak might be a little harder to find. Ariana Martinez reporting for us. Thank you very much, Ariana. Well, the highly contagious bird flu has taken out millions of chickens and turkeys across the Midwest, and now officials are telling us bald eagles are being impacted. 37 million chickens and turkeys have been killed since February after being infected, with more than 13 million of those from Iowa. Nebraska has seen at least eight outbreaks of the disease, forcing farmers to dispose of more than five million chickens across our state. Meanwhile, the USDA is now saying it's confirmed just under 1,000 cases of the flu in wild birds, including at least 54 bald eagles. 
Some of them showing up at rehabilitation centers barely able to fly. One expert saying these new numbers are unprecedented. Well, Lincoln has a very old guest in town for a limited time that you may want to check out. And Nathan Grieve did see that, and he gives us a brief introduction on right now. Nathan. And it may seem a little odd at first to consider the fact that these century-old airplanes honestly feel maybe a little bit safer than new stuff, but think about this. They've been flying for all this time, and nothing bad's happened yet. When you think of an early 1900s Ford, you're probably thinking of this one, but this story's about the Tin Goose, not the Tin Lizzie, and what a story it is. A whole world of famous people got their first airplane ride on a Ford Tri-Motor. Franklin Roosevelt chartered one when he was running for governor in New York to become the first politician to uh, campaign by air. They captured John Dillinger in Arizona, chartered a Tri-Motor to fly him back to Chicago to become the first criminal to be extradited by air. We can also thank this humble 10-seater for everything we associate with air travel today. The airports, the luggage, the <clears throat> basic amenities of flight. And basic is a good description. Flying this thing is a very old school, hands-on process. When it's windy, it's kind of a little bit like a leaf in the breeze, but you can keep it steady. But the pilot's working a lot harder. You know, when it's calm, you just sort of sit there and fly it. But uh, I had somebody tell me one day, the airplane was going along straight and level. He says, it's like watching a duck on water. Now, if you think you've seen something like this before, you're right, because Ross Aviation plays host to old aircraft like this almost every year. Well, we really like to support the general aviation community, and uh, this is a great way to get out and uh, help with the involvement and get the young, young aviators to come out and see the cool history. This is history you can see, touch, and fly in if you like, When's the last time you could do that at the museum? 